I did want to, you know, there's a lot of people here who probably don't know uh, anything about Marion. So I thought I'd just uh, briefly tell you just a little background for those of you that uh, have not been to the conference before and, and don't know who Marion is and what she's doing. She's kind of an institution in uh, rural libraries here in Michigan. Uh, her library is located at, 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 in Lake Neverwest, Michigan, which is about halfway between uh, Isle Royal and Detroit. <laughs> and if you go inland from Lake Michigan, if you get to Lake Huron, you've gone too far. <laughs> uh, as with, you know, this is a very small community that she comes from, uh, but she's done marvelous things, as you know, all uh, rural librarians are able to just do wonders with, with very little. And uh, her library is in an old Quonset hut. For those of you that were born in 1970 or earlier or later, uh, a Quonset hut is a building that's kind of like a big half circle. And they used to do that in World War II, the big one. And um, so she has this uh, Quonset hut library. She got an LS LSCA grant, that's before when they had construction money, and added to that library building and expanded it and got a Winnebago, which was added to the side. So that's now the combination children's room administrative wing. And um, you know, with a Quonset hut, as you you know, when they first moved in, it wasn't a problem to shelve books because you know they didn't have many books. Uh, but uh, as time has gone on, they've had to add more shelving, and you know, the, as you put shelving up on a Quonset hut, it kind of uh, is a problem. So uh, Marion and her uh, board uh, were very inventive, and they figured out that if you put Velcro on the shelf and Velcro on the book, just like that. They have no problem. In fact, some people have difficulty even crying the books off the shelf, which actually keeps the spines in nice condition because there's not people messing up the books and you know, they don't have to read the shelves as often because they're in order. So that gives a little background. She also has a very great friends group. They uh, do all kinds of things and uh, uh, they even do things that are legal. And uh, <laughs> she, uh, uh, one of their latest things that they did a few years ago was to uh, uh, work on delivering books to the hunting camps around uh, Lake Never Was. But in order to do that, the terrain's kind of rough. So they got four wheelers. The friends raised the money for four wheelers. They painted them lime green with uh, um, you know, lightning bolts on the side. And the number of men who have joined the friends has really increased since they got this. And those guys will deliver books one at a time to the hunters who are out there trying to, you know, uh, claim the big buck. Um, of course, most of them have to uh, undo their guns once in a while to even, you know, um, be able to shoot anything. Anyway, that's just a little background on uh, Marion and her, her uh, library. So this is what she wrote. And, and also in 2009, she retired from this library. It actually, actually it happened the same time I retired. I don't know what happened there. Uh, but she writes, Dear Roger, it's been two years since my retirement. I've been living in Florida most of the time and volunteering at the Lake Yucapiney Library. Last year, the person who took my position at Lake Never Was Public Library left in a hurry. It seems she had a gambling problem after playing cards with a group of librarians at the last Rural Library Conference. <laughs> you all know who you are. Uh, let's see, where are we at? Uh, she tried taking our state aid and doubling it. <laughs> that was petty cash. Uh, when that didn't work, uh, she, uh, it, it was the penal fines that were next. When she lost that, she took the petty cash, uh, bought 15 lottery tickets, and gave two 
uh, to each of the trustees with a financial report and a letter of apology. No one has seen her since. Some think that she hid herself in a rides blue bag and is now traveling the delivery circuit. So if you get a big uh, delivery at your libraries, if it starts moving, let us know. Anyway, the board called me and asked me to come back as the interim director. I was firm, though, in dealing with the board. They're not, they are paying through the nose for my expertise. $4.75 per hour and access to all the video cassettes and the 8-track tapes. So I'm back in the saddle. Not much has changed at the library. We have the same board members. Two have been on the board for 62 years each. And one of those has served not only on our board, but also serves on the cooperative board. Uh, Mary, though, I think is slipping. She couldn't find where the last co-op meeting was being held, and she was found in Canada. She's now home after her release from the Canadian customs officials. <laughs> you might like to know about the 2012 World Libraries Conference. Getting there was difficult. I pulled up to the hotel and didn't realize they were redoing the parking lot. A guy in a yellow hard hat and orange coveralls was parking cars, so he drove off with my 1962 Plymouth Valiant. <laughs> Funny though, the bellman said that the hotel doesn't have a ballet service. <laughs> the conference has been wonderful. I met several of my friends at the bar. Brian Bruley uh, bought me 15 unvirgin Shirley Temples and told me more stories about Starvation Lake and the Hanging Tree. When I told him about the people living at Lake Never, in Lake Never Was, he said he would work on getting a TV series called The Real Friends of Lake Never Was Library. This should be a popular reality series. Episodes will include bad cookie receptions, prom dresses, live again, bad, bad girl, American Girl Tees, Iron Chef Demos on Roadkill Day. Uh, this is a joint program with the DNR. Uh, I think some of you probably have had that program. Pam Christensen from Marquette gave us great ideas for library programs. One was about holding a lock-in with genealogists. I couldn't tell they I couldn't tell whether they stayed all night and were released at 7 a.m. Sounds though like a fun evening playing my grandfather was a better horse thief than yours <laughs> or find, uh, finding out that I am I am six persons away from Cheryl Mace and Kevin Bacon <laughs> <laughs> or the game are your roots deeper than mine <laughs> As usual, the conference had great programs on legal issues facing libraries. Ask the, li the, the lawyer was one of them. Um, I always learn new things at the, this program. For instance, did you know that there is a library privacy law? I guess our program where we list the titles of the books the mayor has been reading <laughs> in the last six months will have to be discontinued, as well as what internet sites the superintendent of schools and the council people are, are surfing. It was such a great lobbying tool, though, to get library funding. The mayor, especially, uh, was a supporter of the library. He gave us $20,000 since he was elected three years ago. Oh well, maybe I can think of another way to raise money. The Open Meetings Act is another revelation to me. It seems the public should be able to attend our meetings and see how we spend the money. This invasion by the public is getting out of hand. Next they'll want us to audit our expenditures. What is this country coming to? Don't they realize that the board and myself know better how to finance and run the library. That brings me to, a millet, to millet elections. Dick Butler gave us some great ideas. He was surprised, though, 
when I told him that we had formed the library as a village, township, city, county, district library. <laughs> this way we can have each governmental unit place a millage uh, question on their ballot. So five oh times one mill, that's a lot of money. <laughs> I know I see some of you writing that down. <laughs> Cheryl, watch that, we're going to have lots of things coming to the library of Michigan. <laughs> Kathy Webb at the Library of Michigan, she's the one who does st uh, state aid, for those of you who uh, don't uh, deal with her, um, had some problem, though, deciding on how much state aid we should receive with this uh, arrangement. Sonia Norris, where is she? Oh, there she is. Sonia Norris had a section on the Plinkett website users group. We never participated because we chose to go with the Price the Right Plinko program. <laughs> it doesn't do much for the web presence, but it's a lot more fun playing with those Plinko chips. <laughs> I mentioned Brian Gruley earlier. I wanted you to know he was one of the uh, L uh, Library of Michigan notable books uh, recipients, program authors, and we couldn't get into any of those uh, programs, but however, I talked with Randy Riley. And uh, he said he can get me into the unnotable books <laughs> office program and come and do a program for us. Uh, I think we're going to get Soupy Campbell, <laughs> who will speak on how the Dewey Decimal System changed my life and saved me from a life of crime as an overdue book hoarder. <laughs> Anybody read that one? <laughs> Thursday started out with a great program with Sorjoy Goti? Saroj. Saroj Goti. Okay. She spoke on the importance of rural libraries as an inspiring model of building relationships in a community. At Lake Never Was, we are definite examples of how to build out the library as a community center. Working with the farmer's market, we sell chickens that in the children's room and our children's room staff raise them from the used Easter eggs that we find after Easter. Our gardener has been uh, raising um, uh, medical marijuana which we offer at the farmer's market also. Our youth librarian working with the youth advisory group are electronically entering books into a database, so we will be able to offer our own ebooks collection. <laughs> to skirt those nasty copyright issues, we make sure that we have typos in all the works so that, so that it's not an exact copy. Since Ruth Duclo is no longer in the state, we can get away with that. <laughs> but don't tell Overdrive. The Youth Literacy Program also covered information on how the brain works. Infants have fewer brain synapses or connections than 7 and 14 year olds. I'm planning to a program to check the brains of the staff to see if some of my senior staff are reverting. I think I have... I'm sure she'll be able to want to share this with you guys. Probably next rural conference. Um, let's see. I think I have less brain activity. It takes me longer to figure out where I am and what I had what I had for lunch. I was inspired hearing about the book Mirror Mirror, so I tried some of that poetry. It's a challenge at our Lake Never Was Library to keep open with no money. With no money to keep open. And our Lake Never Was Library is challenging. <laughs> that was after five gin and tonics. <laughs> it still needs work. Uh, uh, Design on a Dime was, act was a very catchy title, so I attended this program. Matt DeBear didn't seem impressed by my our decorating ideas. I think getting the posters from Deb Biggs and wall in the computer room was a great economical idea. <laughs> Drapes made from rides delivery bags was another great idea. And having old catalog cards 
lined the restroom <laughs> partitions had a dual purpose of reading material as well as emergency toilet tissue. <laughs> Some young, uh, oh, excuse me, Matt's young, and I think by the next World Conference, I will convince him to understand the design on a dime philosophy. Summer reading program, oh, she didn't finish that one, so forget about that. All right. Uh, there were several sessions on technology. I don't uh, pretend to be an expert on this, so I depend on the professionals. Travis and Kurt talked about the BTOP project's pack in, pack in a box. I didn't spend much time on this, as I know how to play Pac-Man. <laughs> and this thin client issue doesn't affect Lake Never Was users, since most of our people have a problem keeping their weight down. Maybe after our Big Losers Lunch, lunch Reading Club gets under control, we may go to a thin client program. <laughs> you're, you're free to use that anytime you Very want. Very good. Very good. Uh, let's see. Shirley Burzma. Where is she? Oh, there she is. Uh, Shirley Burzma and her band of experts talked about being a better trustee. I learned a lot and wish some of our trustees were able to attend. They would have been happy to find out they were my boss. <laughs> well, maybe it's better they weren't here. That whole evaluation of the director might be too intense, and working as a team is a little drastic. I'm going, uh, I am going to make some changes, though. We're going to make sure to replace our deceased board member <laughs> and require that board members live in the library service area. We, also, we are also going to have a strategic planning session. I think we need to have a vision for the next six months. The board may also like having a board packet. Now we just use post-it notes to alert the board about meetings, but I think postcards may work as I don't want to change the change to be too dr drastic. There was a session on Friends of the Library. I was pleased to see that our Friends group is doing a wonderful job. The money they make selling National Geographic's Radius Digest condensed books and old encyclopedias has, has allowed us to expand the 8-track collection, the vertical file, video cassettes, and phonograph record collections. I have a feeling we may also have to start CD and DVD collections, although I'm still waiting to see if that media is, still, is, is here to stay. Our friends have also spearheaded the program to take our collection out to the residents of Lake Never Was. We have, they have purchased a new pontoon boat, and the, and the board outfitted it with bookshelves, and now we take the books and materials out to the people who live around the lake. Uh, I think that the RISE program uh, needs to expand. Um, excuse me. They, they right now don't serve Mackinac, Drummond, Isle Royal, and Beaver Island. With special pontoon boats, they could do that. Although, I think they may want delivery to be quick, so we might want an LSTA fund, you have an LSTA funds used to purchase a few speed boats to do the service. Randy Riley and Sonia have both volunteered to be pilots of this program. Uh, there was a program to help libraries uh, service the needs of job hunters. At our library, we have helped patrons find jobs. Our resume service has helped many find jobs. We have added 20 new volunteers to the library just in the last two months alone. Someday, maybe they'll be able to get paid, and then. But in the meantime, they're expanding a lot of in their their resumes. Uh, the vendors had great displays and special offers. I, of course, did not win anything. It doesn't bother me. I don't need to win something. Who cares if I didn't win anything? I don't feel bad. Not too bad. Well, maybe a little. No. I think someone who has devoted as much time to this conference should get something. Nothing. Nothing. No, it doesn't matter. It doesn't bother me. No, never. Well, maybe, no, it doesn't bother me. 
And I say that out loud. The program's entitled Before the Auditors Show Up was very enlightening. I think the previous director left before the auditors showed up. <laughs> I did learn that the auditors don't think uh, buying lottery tickets is a good use of public money. <laughs> Trustee Johnson has been informed that yes, he needs to return his $15 winnings. I also think our poker nights at, uh, may not set well with the auditors, even though we have only a $20 limit. I do think our bookkeeping system may have to change. You will have to keep the canning jar petty cash in the locked place and no longer use it to buy Happy Meals for the staff. <laughs> Christine Johnson talked about uh, Christian fiction. She works for the Northland Library Cooperative and writes romances on the side. Or is it she is a writer and works for the Northland Cooperative <laughs> on the side? Anyway, I've decided to write a book after my interim director job is done. I can't decide if I should entitle my memoir, Gray Days in the Library, or Do We or Don't We? And Do We is D-E-W-E-Y. Just for those that are not, you know, use library conversations. Uh, one of the last programs I attended, uh, oh, one of the last programs I attended presented information on free and inexpensive legal resources. We are now offering free legal clinics at the library. Each Saturday morning, we buy 12 dozen donuts, and the city police, sheriff's de deputies, and the Michigan State troopers come in, and we give them the list of everybody in our area that has broken the law. <laughs> Feel free to use that. One. They, in turn, arrest them, and on Mondays, I have lunch with the district court judge and the prosecutor to decide on the fines to be assessed. <laughs> this program has been remarkable. Our penal fine income has increased 400%, <laughs> and our attendance at Big Losers program has increased with many, many more law enforcement officers attending. A definite win-win situation. Well, I must go now. The bellman located my car on a deserted road near the Benzie Library. It seems people who wear orange coveralls are work release programs from the county jail. Who knew? Well, now I'm off to Lake Never Was to continue the work of bringing culture, information, and a flair for fashion to the an otherwise boring rural town. Cindy Poquette has nothing on me. <laughs> Again, bye for now from Lake Never Was, Never Was, where the women are smart, the men are gorgeous, and the, the library is above average. Thank you. <laughs>